வந்தேஹம் The following is a conversation with His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded on the 1st of April, 1975, in Mayapur, India. It wasn't for a man, uh, for anyone, but he did. He should be, according to the light of his different friends or servants or sons, that is theology. Next time when I go to your country, why not hold a meeting of all the theologians? to discuss publicly what should be the nature of God. What do they describe the nature of God? They describe the nature of God simply in terms of how religious men have understood themselves. They talk about God is simply men understanding men. Hmm. That means nobody has approached real God. That is speculation. If you want to study me, you can do so either by approaching me or through of my confidential servant. How one can understand me from outside by speculating? Why do they come to see me? Le let them remain far away and speculate. That is not possible. In ordinary common sense, the how they speculate about God. If you cannot understand even a common man may be very big in the society. You cannot understand a common by hearsay by speculation. Actually, all of the theologians are lying with one denomination or another. And they're like company men to the big churches. And they're afraid of admitting they do not know about God because they're afraid someone will leave their, their camp and come to ours. We say we know about God. Mm -hmm. Yes, we say plainly that we know God, His Father's name, His address, everything. Let anyone come and challenge. He cannot say, oh, no, this is not God, because He has not approached God. He does not know what is God. How He can challenge us that this is not God? Suppose we are presenting Krishna as God, so how anyone can challenge? Because he has not approved God. He is simply speculating. And not even on his own, he is simply approaching other speculators. Huh? One speculator simply approaches other speculators. Hmm. How they can say this is not God? Is it possible to say? We say, here is Krishna, God. Why not discuss this point for our preaching one? All, all these sannyasis. All sannyasis? Hmm? Theologists and... You know? He is theologian. Now you discuss with him whether by theological uh, arguments one can approach or understand what is God. 
the problem? Sit down straight, otherwise you feel sleepy. <laughs> Theosophy or theology? Huh? Theosophy? No, theology. Theology. But according to academic order, logic is the preliminary study of philosophy. Or our professor, Dr. Watt, he defined like that. In 1900, Seventeen. So, there was a governor in Bengal, Lord Ronald Say, Marquis of Jetland. He was a Scottish man. And our college was Scottish Church's College. So, that Lord Ronald Say was a very good scholar. So he was, when he was invited, he was taken to all the classes. So he was at that time, and second year. So I took permission to sit down in the first benches. The, our college was very big. In each class there were 150 students. So they were giving roll number according to admission. So I did not know that. So my roll number was 105. So I thought it didn't I have to sit down after 100 students. So I took one certificate from Dr. Kartik Chandra Ghosh, who became later on my boss, because he was our father's friend. So give me one certificate in this way that I am hard of hearing. I must be given first role seat. So he gave me the certificate. <laughs> What does uh, theology say? Hmm? What does theology mean? This explains. This is the study of faithful men understanding themselves through the medium of the church. No. You, you discuss whether this point is very nice. So what is the authority? The authority is the Christian tradition, the Bible. Bible yeah. is part. When he says church, that means authority Bible. No part. The Bible is part. Only part. Huh? He says the Bible is, <coughs> Bible is not the uh, complete authority. No, it's the tradition of the church through the great founding fathers, the great theologians, up until the present day. Uh, church, church is following Bible. Yes. So ultimately Bible becomes authority. In certain segments of Christianity, not... So what is that conclusion? Excuse me, one minute before you go on. What is this in relation to this discussion, this question? This subject matter is whether by theological arguments one can understand God. According to dictionary theology, mm. theo, Latin word theo, it means that means God. Mm. Theo means God, and as far as I know, theology means the science or the study of God. Yeah. So by definition, not, yeah. not precisely. The word theology comes from the word logos, theo logos, and logos <coughs> means sense means the word of God. Yes. Now, the words of God. That means one must know what is God. Yeah. Otherwise, how he can know this is the word of God? What is the answer of theology? The word of God uh, is that a man is known by his work, his truth, that he is a godly man. No, no. Unless 
you know what is God, how you can accept this is the word of God. It's like you say, Prabhupada says, you take it accept it. Oh, it's Prabhupada says. But you know what is Prabhupada. So in it the, is it is not a fiction. In theological circles, yes, they are accepting great authorities like Augustine, Thomas Aquinas, Martin Luther, as well as the Shastra, the Bible itself. But Martin Luther and Yes, there are many poets, many different ways. But that's why the, the goal is not so much a theology. Saint Paul. The first Saint Paul? First Saint Paul. He was before Martin Luther. Yes, he's before Martin Luther. <coughs> also, this word logos, um, in the Bible it says, in the beginning there was a word. That's logos, right? In the beginning there was a word. So what, what what word was that? In the beginning, he says, in the beginning there was the word. According to that same verse, that word was God. But they may must explain, just like in basic literature, the same idea is there. Don't lean. I'm getting a skill, an old man, but you should sit down. Guru Maharaj. So, we know what is the word. Word. Omkar. Omkar is the word. So what is the Christian word? Again, there's no absolute authority. That's why there is not a science that we can go to like we can to Srila Prabhupada with it for an exact answer. Bhagavad Gita, exact absolute authority. In the Christian tradition, it is simply defined as faithful men understanding themselves in the light of the scripture, in the light of the uh, tradition. Now, that is because you are our, our student. Suppose our preachers meet the theologian. Also, prove that theology is not the means. Theology generally, you say, it is speculation. The our point is that nāyamātmā prochanī na labdhā nā medhaya nā bhuhnā sripe nā. The ātmā, Krishna, cannot be understood or approached prochanī nā. Simply by logical arguments. Uh, the theologians would agree, Srila Prabhupada. Mm. It's a question of what's called uh, apologetics. Mm. Theology has a specific function for the Christian Church to bring people within the fold, simply to convince them through any means, logical or whatever, to then to come within the church community. And then once they're within that group, then they can participate in what's called the Christian life. You have taking sacraments, uh, Christian fellowship, uh, taking communion. How many parties disagree? Oh yes, that is, they they will do that. Yes, um, I met one. I was traveling about three months ago in India. I met one person on the train. So we began to discuss the shastra. So I mentioned some of the arguments in reference to the Bible. It said that Christ was speaking basically to an uneducated public, the fishermen, etc. So then this man, he stopped me. He said, that's all right. But he said, ah, you're who, looking... Who, you're, who said? I was discussing with one Christian in India. Hmm. So I, I, I attacked, politely I attacked his scriptural reference, the Bible. I think that it was not meant at an educated community. So then he stopped me. He said, that's all right. He said, you couldn't speak about fishermen, but he said the prime exponent of Christianity was Paul. And Paul was previously Saul. He was not a fisherman. And he was traveling to a, a town on a particular Damascus. And there he received direct revelation from God. 
And he said, then this one man, single-handedly, he converted most of the known world to Christianity. That means he got direct revelation from God. Yes. That is one thing. So he said, just to talk about the Bible as evidence is not enough. He said, you're overlooking direct revelation, which is, which is what we are also dealing with. That the man who lives according to the Word of God, he receives the Word of God directly. Did he say that? Did he say that? He said to that effect, yes. He said, your argument about a fisherman coming in is not completely valid. There's all of the differentiation we must make between a Christian who we might meet and engage in argument and the theologian himself. The theologian is a very oily character, very hard to pin down. The, the Christian, he may have specific beliefs, dogmatic, tenaciously holding to dogma, but the theologian, he, uh, the theologian, they are simply word juggles. They are, they are not held nearly so tightly. One we were bringing up was simply the theology is the mean that faithful men are coming to understand themselves, not that are approaching God. One approaches God within a community yes. and within... A true man understands God, that we say. Then, what is the basic principle of fear? Why this separates science and miscarriage and fear of Logic means science. Yes. From the Christian point of view, the science is there simply that man does not accept simply by sentiment or by faith, but he can have his mind convinced as well. Yes. That has to be. Again, a Christian, in Krishna consciousness, we can ask such a question. What does Bhagavad Gita or uh, Krishna consciousness say about the self or about Krishna? But in theology, it's not so cut and dry. There's so many different authorities, each one saying a different thing. You must say, uh, so-and-so says, uh, well, they say at the time of judgment, a man must stand before the ever-living God, and he will be held accountable for his actions during this life. Now, that's only a very small group. Those are fundamentalists who take strict interpretation of the Bible, and they're a very small group. And even that group doesn't have very many thoughtful or theological uh, men well, backing it. All Christians, they believe that there are events. In one way or another, they're going to be held accountable to the Word of God, isn't that? No. Well, how they can have any how they can have any tenets or principles if they don't believe that they're accountable to God? Because they believe that they can use Jesus like a doormat to clean no, up. One thing is that why theology should be um, in reference with Bible. If it is science, then why should it refer only to the Bible? Yes. The biggest school of theology, Harvard School of Theology, the study of the Bible is there but only in the side. Instead they study Freud, Karl Marx, uh, everybody else that they should study Gita. Yes. That's our point. How to get them to realize that? That's the question. So we'll ask them, we, we have a very most scientific and detailed description of the self and God and the means to justice. That cannot be avoided in your head. And we claim the highest standard of renunciation and worship and godly uh, society. And their answer, their answer to such a, uh, a challenge will be, you please go across the street to the study of the river. God is not a Christian God. But they're not interested. They want only want to hear the Christian point of view. And for them, Christian doesn't mean Bible. It means uh, their own... That's Prabhupada's first thing. What is God? Is it a Christian God? What is God? What is your definition of God? Is it a Christian God or pure? First of all, um, this should be standing whether God can be Christian God and Hindu God and Muslim God. Is God to be designated like that? God is one. So how there is one God? A Hindu has God separate God. Muslim has God separate God. Then how God is one? Their answer would be, we cannot talk about God. We can simply talk about the Christian tradition of God, or the tradition of Christian God. And your knowledge is limited? 
then either Christian tradition, then it becomes bound up by the Christian idea. And that is exactly the situation today. But that is not God. Just like gold. Gold is everywhere gold. Because it is in Christian country, you cannot say it is Christian gold. And because it is in Muslim country, you cannot say it is Muslim gold. Gold is the world standard, money. The same gold dispatched from America can be accepted in India. Dispatched from India can be accepted in Palestine because it is gold. Everyone who knows what is gold, he will accept it. So God should be in India. And therefore, in the name Krishna, all accept. When there is gold, Either you be Christian, Muslim, Hindu, or oh, here is a lump of God, can I call this? That is attractive. So as gold is all attractive, similarly God must be all attractive. And that word is used as Krishna. Krishna means all attractive. One who knows gold, he will be attracted. Doesn't matter whether he is Hindu, Muslim, Christian, poor, rich man, black, white, it doesn't matter. Here is gold and everyone. Just like in your country there was gold rust. Eh? In California. From all different parts of the world they can. The gold is gold for everyone. So now one should try to understand and check what is gold. That is it. These men, Srila Prabhupada, are very, very puffed up. They think that even such discussions of who God is and what God is uh, that they feel they're way past that, and that's for lower class men to discuss. Well, well, but when, well, when you came to France, you the Prabhupada, you spoke at the theology club. Uh, about four years ago, you came for a conference. They arranged a big meeting at the at Theology uh, Society in the heart of France. Well, it's a, it's a worldwide society. And one thing I was uh, one thing I was considering. They must be interested because. The Christians say that there is soul, and they say that there is God. So then, wouldn't our question be, what is the relationship of the soul to God? They admit there is a soul. Every human being, they say, has a soul. No, that, that is also a beginning of understanding, but first up, preliminary understanding should be that God is one. There cannot be Christian gods, there cannot be Hindu gods, there cannot be Muslim gods. That is not, not complete idea of God. That is imperfect. Just like in Vedic literature, Brahmati, Paramatmati, Bhagavan. Three phases of understanding of the Absolute. First beginning is Brahma, then further advanced Paramatma, then final advancement, Bhagavan. Similarly, uh, the final realization of God is the Supreme Person, then we should see who is that person. And that is real. What if they say, we agree there's one God, but we do not agree that his name is Krishna, or we do not agree... Then you suggest what is his name. My next challenge will be... Well, uh, if I'm you suggest... In the Bible they give twelve names for God. Ah, uh, let, let me finish this. If you do not accept Krishna is the name of God, I have explained what is the idea of Krishna. Yes. Krishna means all attract. The example is given just like gold. Gold is attracting to everyone. Yes. 
to the educated, to the uneducated, to the black, to the white, man, woman, everyone. The one who knows gold, gold is a threat. Similarly, uh, God is all, all a threat. There cannot be that it is black gold, it is white gold, it is Christian gold, it is Hindu gold. No, gold is gold. So we present Krishna that here is God, honestly. That you say, no, he is not God. Then you present your God. Oh. I know just you cannot say, reject, you cannot reject Krishna unless you present an ordinary God. Well, here's the part of the thing I remember in the Judeo tradition, Judeo Christian tradition. Um, in the book, and whenever we used to go to service and all that, they used to have in the prayer books, they would never write out the name of God. Because oh, they that said, means they, you do not know. No, they said God's name should never be spoken out loud. Why? I don't know. It is nonsense. If you know somebody, why should you say his name should not be expressed? They say that God's name is so pure and we're so impure that to utter his name is to make it impure. No, that's not okay. That non believers should not know it. That is all right. So they don't say it out loud. No, when we come to argument that we are supposed to be all believers in God, we are not non believers. We simply want to ascertain who is that. We are not non believers. And some persons who believe in God come together so, to ascertain this God. Just like when we come to a meeting to elect a president, so they are not non believers. They are not non believers. There are so many personalities, candidate for president. Now, who is the right person to become the president. That is one. To the non believers he has no access about discussion in God. He has no access. When we discuss about God, it is suppose they are all believers. So if you say this time we are holding <coughs> meeting to ascertain there are so many names of God. Now we are certain he is real God. God means there should be no more evolving. Mattap Parataram Nanya. That is God. Christians have such a meaning. We call him Yahweh. Yes. Yahweh means I am that I am. No one is beyond me. Yahweh. They will say Yahweh is God. No. Yahweh, what, what is it? That is the name. Name. I am that it means in English, I am that I am. Some people translate that as Jehovah. That Jehovah. is the same word. Thank you. Everyone agrees they do not know what the real name is. Some say Yahweh, some say Jehovah. The Jewish tradition replaces it completely and says Adonai. No, that's all right. He may not say. But uh, we have to say some meaning. What is the meaning? No one is beyond me. That's all right. No one is beyond me. Then he comes to our confusion. We all attract. They come to our confusion. All attract. Because if somebody is beyond him, then he should be attracted. Yes. If he is finer, attractive, then all attract. Krishna. Krishna means all attract. What is that? It would be very nice to engage in this way, Srila Prabhupada, but they're not interested. They're interested no. in... And my idea is that what they're interested in people and how they have a self. Right. So we have the highest standard of renunciation, highest standard of piety, highest standard of uh, all religious quality. So they cannot deny it. They cannot be not interested. But in that sense, in they, they would see it as a threat. Yeah, so then you're only interested in keeping your Harvard chair. That's right. And they're not sincere. Harvard chair, bishop's salary, bishops get $25,000 a year. And if you can't discuss openly with people, then what? 
The point is they have big, big buildings, <coughs> big, big salaries, big, big... Uh, that, is, that is all right. If you want to keep one man in a very high position, you should give all comfort. That is, so just like if you want to keep a king, he must have a palace, he must have his officers, secretaries. So he, he means to say that if we present that we are better theologists than their position will be in jeopardy. And um, the question is, and what? Now we are hypothetically in the situation we are approaching these theologists. Then why are we approaching? If they are not open to discussion, I mean, what is the purpose of going to study theology? The purpose is because they are purporting to be what Sri Prabhupada really is. Sri Prabhupada is the real theologian, but they are using that name. And they, in that sense, they are the biggest cheaters. They're going by the name theologian, and they're not actually theologians. They're simply scholars, dry academicians. Oh, yes, they're scholars. The scholarship, they have degrees by their name. <laughs> They've gone through listening to other mental speculators, and now their students listen to them. You said there are twelve names? Yes. Yeah. I have a list of them. In the Bible? Yes. One of them means the Lord who sees me. One of them means the Supreme Friend, the Supreme Father. One of them means uh, Lord of the Mountain. One of them means the, the, the King, the, the, great, the greatest King. Brother is another meaning. Uh, so, and these are all in the Old Testament. They are all these different names. So that one of their arguments is that we are presenting a different name, therefore they think it is a different God. We can refer that there are twelve names, does that mean that we have twelve gods? We have the, uh, names which uh, yeah. apply to those also. The three friends. Yeah, Dina Mondo. Hey Krishna Kalunasandu, Dina Mondo, Jagatpate. What's another one? Gopika Sutra. Huh? The Lord of the Mountain. Then? The brother. Gopika. What is that? Next name. The brother. The There are so many names in one body. And we have got thousands of names. Lord Chaitanya would hear from Sri Das Pandit, the thousand names of the Sri. Yeah. And thousand men that they found but he has got millions of them. In one case you said actually God has no name. You said God has no name, but because No, has... that is other parties argument. God has no name. No, no, in the tape you said in this tape Bhajan explanation of Bhajan you said God actually God has no name, but because he does so many things then he has no yes. name. According to his activity. But that name. But all these twelve names, they still make that that personality whom they are describing all attractive. Yes. So that means and not only that, when you have names, that means God is possible. That is what I God cannot be impossible. You may have twelve names or twelve thousand names, but when he has got names, person. Now, our point is, who is that person? Their point in one of the points is, well, if Christ was actually the Son of God, why didn't he talk about Krishna? Hmm? If Christ was the Son of God, the good Son, hmm. how is it that he didn't, he never mentioned Krishna by name? Sometimes they criticize that question. Why is there no mention of Krishna in the Christian Bible? Hmm. He might not have mentioned, but why is there are twelve names in the Bible? That's all testimony. It's not Christ. Because the name is there. And Christ, Prabhupada, is Prabhupada. Huh? The point is that, just like when you're... Now, first of all, he's one should be answered. I want to answer his point. Yeah. The answer to his point is that, just as there's a president of the United States, hmm. so when someone is talking about the president, according to how intimate that person is, you discuss different subject matters. For example, if the person is just a common person, 
a regular person, you may discuss about the president's powers in the government. But when you meet someone who actually is intimately connected with the president, then you describe the president's family, how the president's family is doing, what is the president doing in his time of relaxation, etc. So similarly, Jesus was studying with persons who were not very intimate with God. They were not so much spiritually advanced. Therefore, for those persons, simply the power and glory of God is mentioned in the Bible. But Krishna, the description of Krishna in the Bhagavatam is meant for the pure devotees. And for them, the very detailed, intimate description of Krishna is A very major thing happened in the Christian tradition in about 400 A.D. Up until that time, as best our records are, that Christianity was very much like Krishna consciousness, very much like our movement. But at that time it became the official religion of the Roman Empire, the Constantine, and it took on many of the paraphernalia of the old Roman demigod worship. And at that time it became the whole... Just to make it favorable for the Lord. For the Lord. That deterioration began. Well, they don't... Again, mentioning this Saul. Saul was converted on the way to Damascus and he became a believer in God. Then by himself he traveled all over the known world and convinced everyone in the Roman Empire to accept to accept Christianity. So it may have taken on those those formal <coughs> formal signs, but uh, actually, actually uh, there was no process. According to them, there was no process done to dilute the religion or to weaken it or to change it, but it was only accepted by the masses. That's all. But really actually, a, a very interesting thing in terms of this point is that this Paul, Saul, was in conflict with the directest of the successions from Jesus. In many points, uh, those who were Jesus' direct disciples, Paul disagreed with them and cut out many of their teachings or the teachings that were coming down in direct discipline succession to uh, make it more palatable to the, uh, the outlying areas, the government. You know? yeah. So at that moment there, the discipline succession was broken. Now, what is the time difference between Paul and uh, the government? He was here at the same time. Uh -huh. Peter, James, he was a contemporary, but he had never had a personal contact with Jesus. What did this was in the beginning he was he was against Christianity he was antithetical to it and then mm -hmm. he appeared a professional uh, religionist and, and made it popular to it. and then he experienced the so-called conversion isn't it? Yes. He, he heard a voice fell off the horse and he was blinded and his eyesight would only be restored when he would approach a certain man in Jerusalem who was part of the Christian fold, and when he approached that man, then his sight would be, be returned. Now, another question. So we say God's man and God all part. Chaitanya, Namna, Mukari, Bhoda, Vijayasat, Tatrat, in the name of God. All God's potential are there. So if you got any name like that, that means if you chant that name, you get immediately contact with God. That idea is put forth in the Psalms repeatedly. It says, sing the name of the Lord with uh, high sounding cymbals, with drums. It says in one place that the name of the Lord is exalted even beyond heaven. How do that mean? Is it fair? That, what does that mean? They don't, the Christians, but, and it says, sing the name of God, but they don't do that. And that's all right. Yes. But if you have to chant the name, this way we prescribe, chant Hare Krishna. So, what is the name they recommend to chant? Adonai. Huh? Adonai. Right. Uh, it is such a catastrophe. But that's the name that they're Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Yukhod. Now by the Christians. Jesus. Jesus. Adonai is whose name? Jewish. Now in India, Christians say that Jesus Christ is God. They're trying to substitute in the beginning of the Bible, it says that in the beginning of the Word, and the Word was God. 
In modern day translations, they have substituted the word Christ as the word. So it says in the beginning was Christ, and Christ was God. So they're trying to make, they're trying uh, in that way to make Jesus God, and that is the name. Because they don't know what is that word. We can understand this. That is the, again, another, another fellowship. Yes. It is adulteration, but the tendency is there, because Krishna is a person, because God is a person, they, everyone wants to worship God as a person. It's the only way God can be worshipped. So because they do not know Krishna, they make Jesus God so they can worship Him as a person. That is not true. do they do? Huh? They worship me to follow the instructions. And they do they follow? follow the instructions. Yeah. They, do they follow the Ten Commandments? No. They say you cannot, it is not possible. Only you have to accept Christ, then you have to accept that one. Huh? Well, that one said it is not possible. It is not possible. They give up meat and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Very Christian. <laughs> we are the Christian. Yeah. Well, they say, that, they say that you can't do any of these things, so you have to accept Christ in your heart. That was, that was my chance. That we are doing them better than all of you, so you know that's the No. If you keep God or Christ within your heart, then your heart will be purified. That means you are cheating. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it boils down to. You are all cheaters, not Christians, but cheaters. You do not keep heart in your heart, Christ's name or God's name, but you keep your own ideas. Therefore you think it is you. Otherwise, your heart will have been cleansed. Chaita Dattvana Mahajanam. Sindhatam Sadhata Krishna Pranda Savana Kirtana Riddhantatta Avadrani Vidu Nati. Anyone who is speaking Krishna within his heart, he becomes clean of so all dirty things. And because the dirty things are there, that means he is not Krishna. So I am just interested that people, it will, many people will come and many theories. So you discuss among yourself how to get the strength to defend yourself and to convince you. And unless their theology is practical, if it's not practical, then it's useless to study theology. It has no practical application. They make that point. Therefore they say such talk about God is impractical. So therefore we don't bother talking about God. We don't why you put theology? That is our point. And why you have to put the theology? There is no use talking about that is another thing. But when you make logic, you must come to logic. Logic means discussion. Is it not? Logic means science. Hmm? Find out this mm-hmm. Logic is the rational ordering of thought in words. When I was in uh, when I was in San Francisco six or seven years ago, some some new school of theology, the, theologians they were having things like they were opening up churches to the hippies to have parties for LSD and things like that. I was a live memorial church they had that. And, and uh, a number of the other new theologians who were starting to talk about free sex and drugs yeah. and all those things. They put on stunts to attract people to accept this gene. But bingo. Yes. Bingo. They have opened special churches for homosexuals. Huh? Special churches for homosexuals in Australia. Oh, all of them. All of them. So let's see. Churches for illicit sex, churches for intoxication, Churches for gambling yeah. and ter- churches for meat eating. One time I was driving a taxi and the woman got into camp and she said, I hope my goddamn luck is better tonight. She was going to a church. <laughs> <laughs> she was going to a church to play bingo. And she was speaking like that. There's the word, uh, logos. Logos. Logos is here. It means word or second person of the Trinity. No, no, logic. 
राजी इज नाजिक नाजिक इज हियर स्कीम ऑफ वर्ड ट्रस्टिंग ऑन साइंस ऑफ रीजनिंग चेन ऑफ रीजनिंग आर्ग्यूमेंट लॉजिक ऑफ लॉजिक इन इंफॉर्मेटिव विथ प्रिंसिपल ऑफ लॉजिक In words, in logic means logic. Uh, yeah. You're saying what you are. Your own theory cannot be done. That's illogical. Yeah. You propose a theory and say it cannot exist. <coughs> that's illogical. Is it? Skyflower. Yeah. Yeah. Each of these big theologians has a specific area of specialization. For <coughs> uh, <laughs> example, I took a course when I was a student in the. School of Theology in the New Testament, hoping to learn scriptures, but instead the entire semester was spent trying to decide which of the books of the Bible came first, the Book of Matthew or the Book of Mark, and they had very uh, detailed ways of what they called form criticism, taking a particular passage and checking it. What is their method? Why did you say you joined? What was it? I mean, what was you were trying to study? I would. Three years to a school of theology, but that particular course. This was a course in the New Testament. So why did you why did you say you took it? You, you to study the shastra, to study the scriptures. What was being said instead? So what is their method for examining their uh, material research? The material That's research correct. is taking uh, finding certain uh, forms, certain sentence construction, grammar. And comparing it with other passages in the scriptures, I suppose that grammar, see if the form is the same, uh, to see, uh, determined by different uh, criteria, which came first, which is earlier. So after, uh, that, is that, that is academic. Yeah. That is not theology. I think the problem is that theologians invented these questions like, can God? Can God make a yardstick with no end? How many angels can fit on the head of a pin? Can God make a mountain that He can't pick up? Can God commit suicide? All these questions they not so much about. This is what's called the philosophy of religion. This is different than theology. Philosophy of religion are all atheists, uh, all taking pokes at the other people's ideas. Yeah. A, a great uh, conference of philosophers of religion met in London about ten years ago on the topic talk of God. Each man presented a paper, his idea of talk of God. No one had any inkling of God. Simply, they were speculating on why people talk of God. <laughs> well, what is the use of all this? I'd rather just sit home and read Chaitanya Charitamrita <laughs> than, than get into this. <laughs> The use, the, the reason for it is because these people, though they are great rascals, are influencing millions of other people. They're influencing them to hell, rather than those same people hearing from Srila Prabhupada or hearing from you gentlemen can be elevated to the point of Krishna consciousness. It is a single series where you say, look, you've been sitting here since St. Paul and you haven't arrived at anything except uh, discussion and you're bluffing the whole public that you're doing some advanced research and taking salaries and all that. But, but we have to convince them. But how can you how can you convince them? Because they haven't come to any conclusion. Yeah, how can you convince them? You know, they can't they cannot define who is God. They cannot define what is the soul. They cannot define what is the principles of religion. And their leader, they cannot de- they can't they cannot they don't even have any decisive concession. Their shastras they can't agree upon them what is a concise shastra. Nor can they agree on what is the importance of accepting shastra in the first place. They're doing all sinful activities. So then, oh, then what is there to convince? So why not start an authoritative group of Christians to chant Hare Krishna? This guy we are going to read the Bhagavad Gita. We are all Christians. We already are. Actually. <laughs> But they're seen as they don't accept that. Though, if somebody was calling them, that to it is not possible that everyone will accept it. Yeah. That is not possible. The Christians on the street they don't accept because they say you have not accepted Christ. I say I am following all Christ's teachings. They say well you haven't been baptized. If, if you're following all the principles. But this is a, this group of Christians you meet on the street that are fundamentally following the Bible are a very different group from the big Harvard scholars. The theologians that we're concerned with are those that are actually influencing millions of people by their 
I never met anyone who was influenced by any of these theologians. I never even heard of them. I never even heard of them until you just started to me today. I don't know anybody in the Western world who's influenced by any theologians. So maybe, maybe they know the, uh, okay. the politics for churches. So maybe they yes. They do. The main people who listen to the theologian are the pulpit preachers, the uh, shepherds of individual flocks of Christians around the world. They are the ones who are most influenced by the theologians. Government leaders all over the world are influenced. They, they, they run their, they base their policies on, on the ethics of Christian church. Well, I, I, if, if you try to present something different, then they're opposed to that, to their conditioning based on the influence. But is the Christian church, is that being determined by the theologians at Harvard? They, they have to. Yes, they, said they, they, said the, uh, they write the books. So. They, they interpret the Bible. They're the so-called gurus. They, because they interpret the scripture in whatever way they want to. So you know something? Yes, we've had some contact. We arranged a very nice uh, meeting with Kirtananda Maharaj, with the, one of the foremost theologians at Harvard, whose name was Harvey Cox, such a familiar with the secular city. And we came and brought devotees into the class to chant. People thought it was... So what is his uh, suggestion? Now, what was his reaction, first of all? What was his reaction to Krishna consciousness? What did he say? They don't take us seriously. They still look upon us as just singing and dancing in the streets, and that's it. Wasn't it? That's also, have to that that's also there in the Hindu community. Most of the Hindus they don't take us seriously either. The reason we're here right this afternoon is the fact that, that uh, though these men are preaching this rascaldom, our preaching can undermine it, at least to the point where they can be influenced, and that the people that they are. Uh, are, are being influenced by will take some notice that this is a viable alternative to the rational of the business. Who's the biggest? The, there is no, I would say, among theologians, no consensus. So when are they satisfied that you're a real Christian or not? When do you become a theologian? Who is the big theologians? How are they accepted? Basis of degree? Yes, the scholarships, books published. <coughs> And Bob, and and probably, it could probably be possible to be a theologian without even really believing in Christianity. Oh, definitely. Most of them don't. So and and then Prabhupada is the biggest yeah, theologian because we've got 22 <laughs> books right here on the shelf. And we have the credentials, and they cannot dismiss the books either because we have the credentials that they are being used in major universities all over the, all over the world. So the universities are accepting, and they get their power from the degrees of from the universities they cannot dismiss any longer. Where the most concrete they get is their dissatisfaction with the present status quo. So in that we're in agreement with them. Yes, we're dissatisfied with the status quo also. But we are offering alternatives that are... Uh, they're dissatisfied with that people are simple. Where is their method to change them? They're not dissatisfied. The matter is there. The Ten commandments, but they won't follow. Well, Instead of being dissatisfied with the fact that people are sinful, my thought is already there. They're dissatisfied the with the, the fact that. And they don't follow it. That exactly is the point. They're looking to Freud, they're looking to Marx, they're looking to. Other than the theologians, people listen to psychiatrists. Yes, the theologians listen to psychiatrists. Many of the theologians today are influenced by a book called I'm Okay, You're Okay. Dr. Harris. And this, this book's central tenet is that we can be happy in life simply by patting each other on the back and say, approving of what each other does. So the Actually, the general nature is sticking under their head and the shoulders every minute and they think everything is okay. That is my Right. And our next point is that we say the God, the person, is identical with his name. Now, if you, by meeting God, by seeing God, he becomes unified, then by chanting his name also he will become unified. Because he said, 
God and His name identical. But in, by meeting God, you become immediately purified of material contamination. Similarly, by chanting God's name, you immediately become purified. So, what, what is that name of God? That acts immediately, exactly like God. So, for Krishna name is concerned, it is spectacular. So many thousands of men are chanting Krishna and they become purified. So, find out any other name which can act equally, then they will be accepted as God's Not by imagination. How do you find out? Huh? How, how, if a person says, how do you find out? How, how can we find out another name? Yes, we are chanting Hare Krishna and we are becoming purified. That is the name. Through a chant Krishneti na varnadvaram. Krishneti krishna varna alphabet 2. Jivagasyāyata krishnēti varnadvāyam. This is it. Rāma, rāmeti varnadvāyam. Chant Rāma, Rāma, chant Krishna, and it is that. And there is proof. And find out any other name. If it acts like that, then it is God's name. Halena Parichyata, by the action, we have to understand the substance. Just like queening is understood to subsidize, subside fewer than if you take something as queening and if your fever is gone, then it is cleaning. Similarly, God name is acting as God, purifying. So Krishna is purifying. That is God's name. Okay. We have got two processes. One process is chanting. Another process is there is also chanting. One argument that the Christians have when we tell them that we accept Lord Jesus, well, they say that you haven't accepted Jesus into your heart. You say we're following the teachings of Jesus. And they say, but you haven't accepted Jesus into your heart. You're not a follower of Jesus. And that's a lacking qualification. It is very difficult to we may not keep Christ in heart, but you need do not keep Christ by your being. You are simply dissolving the others. But how can we do so? Uh, many will come to me and say, Lord, Lord, that we cure the sick in your name when we cast out demons in your name. And Jesus said that when they come, I will say, get away from me, I know you not, for you fail to do the will of my Father, even though they're claiming to be Christians. Yes. Many times, Sri the Prabhupada, I've heard you say, in speaking to people, that you don't have to give up your faith. You can remain a Christian or you can remain a Mohammedan, simply chant the Hare Krishna mantra, and you become purified. So the main point... So he said, not only Hare Krishna, you yes. chant the name of God. Yes. But if you have no name of God, then here is the name of God. Yes. So if we can get Christians to chant Hare Krishna, then because many of them are afraid to... Anyone them. who chants Hare Krishna, he becomes free. Yes. It doesn't matter what he is. Many of them are afraid to accept our movement or our philosophy because they feel that their personal religion is threatened, that they'll have to stop being a Christian. 
to what I earlier mentioned, that to start some Christian group, the idea was that if you have some people who are professing to be Christians, but they are taking the word of Jesus to the deepest point, where he says that there are many things I have not revealed to you, and you will understand them by the grace of the Holy Spirit. So they 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 could have a, a Christian group where people worship Lord Jesus as their spiritual master and simultaneously worship Krishna, and they could introduce that to a, to develop more knowledge of God. One can read the Bhagavad Gita. One can follow the instruction in the Bible by chanting the names of God. And they would have better access to Christians than those of us who are wearing robes or shaving our heads. Better than same people to understand that Srila Prabhupada meets all the qualifications that yes. Jesus Christ meant. Plus more. And he is here and he is here. He is the Christ. Christ right. is the anointed one of God. 